Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Dark Art Society podcast. My name is Chet Zar. I'm the host. I uh, Today I'm interviewing artist Richard Ingersoll. Normally I do this after I do the interview, but because my schedule's crazy, I'm doing it before the interview, which is really the way you should do it. But I got a lot going on. I'm just trying to keep up with everything. Um, so anyway, he's a really great artist, really unique, has his own style. I've been following him for years and uh, been meaning to have him on the podcast. So about to do that in 20 minutes. I'm just recording this first. And uh, yeah, so what's been going on? Fourth uh, of July was yesterday. Had that horrible shooting. Uh, watched that pretty much all day live coverage of that it was very depressing uh working on my zombie death bots show i'm haven't started the paintings yet and time is running out so i'm really starting to get cracking on that i'm doing a new technique where i am i did some quick rough oil studies then i took pictures of those brought them into photoshop and i'm kind of adding photoshop elements and um, kind of photo bashing, but painting on top of that, sort of the way I used to do uh, makeup effects, creature design work. So then I'm going to paint those as studies again over the studies I started once I get the Photoshop's done. So it's a different, I'm, you know, every show I try and change my technique up a little bit just to keep it fun and interesting. And so this is um, so far the, the, Photoshop comps are really, really looking cool. So excited about that. Just got to get them done. Not excited about the time frame that I said wasn't going to happen. And time got away from me again. So I've been working on that and uh, that's about it, I guess. Uh, just juggling everything, the usual. Uh, oh, shit. Oh man, I forgot to check. I can't do it now. Shit. Okay. I'm going to have to pause this. Yeah. So if you <clears throat> want to see progress pics of my show, I, I post the whole process, uh, my painting process on my Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash Chet Czar. And um, last show I sold the work all the work before the show opened through the patreon Patri patrons get first dibs on everything so oh that was the other thing that happened is i had a pin release siamese clowns pin release from with almost amusing that was pretty cool and um also had some uh resins and stuff i have that on my web web store chetsar.bigcartel.com anyway um if you want to support this podcast, you can you can go to patreon.com slash dark art society and join for as little as a dollar. Um, subscriptions have slowed down quite a bit. I don't have any new subscribers this week, but that's that's how we keep the podcast going. So if you want to support, you can do it for only a dollar a month. And if you join at the five dollar level, you get entered every month to win a skull from the skull shop. S-K-U-L-L-S-H-O-P-P-E dot com. There's a skull from the skull shop that I use all the time. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, we do a drawing every month. I still, the, the Jennifer Steck, if you're listening to this, we have a skull for you. You haven't responded to my messages. So um, you won last month uh what oh yeah and our other sponsor is a uh, beautiful bizarre art prize i'm going to read their copy they gave me it's coming up international beautiful bizarre art prize 2022 is now open for entries it's an annual non-acquisitive art prize celebrating diversity and excellence in the representational visual arts it's international it's open to any country covers all static mediums, traditional, digital, photographic, 
all styles from realism to hyperrealism to dark art, which is what we love, pop surrealism and lowbrow. Over 57,000 in cash and prizes to be won, as well as global exposure and the chance to exhibit at Modern Eden Gallery in San Francisco. A grand prize winner will receive $13,500 in cash alongside a host of other prizes. There are also a host of prizes for second and third prize winners in each category. Uh, it's worth noting that the Beautiful Bazaar team look at every entry. It's the best way to get your work in front of them, including the editor of chief, editor-in-chief, Daniela. I can't ex pronounce her last name, but Daniela, Dan Daniela editor-in-chief. She sees it herself. So on top of that, 110 finalists will automatically be ent entered into the People's Choice Award where the general public will vote on who they want to win. So there's two more chances to be a winner. And for information regarding the award categories, full list of prizes and how to enter, you can go to beautifulbazaarartprize.art. And you can just, it doesn't have to be a new piece of work. It could be something from your existing portfolio. The uh, uh, sponsors are uh, the gold prize sponsors, Raymar, Inprint, iCanvas, Yasha Young Projects and Art Station, Silver Art Prize sponsors, Smart School, Poets, Artists, Digital Printmaker, and Rosemary Brushes. I honestly would enter this if I had the time. So I think it's a, it's a great opportunity and good money and uh, uh, Beautiful Bazaar is great, a great magazine. So uh, that is that. Um, is there anything else? I guess that's it. Am I forgetting something? Mm. No. Well, I don't, if I forgot something, I have no idea what it is, but I think I covered everything. Anyway, nobody listens to this. Everybody wants to hear the interview is my guess. So let's get on with it. Here we go with Richard Ingersoll. Hope you like it. Hello, Richard. Got a little notice here. <laughs> What's up? Is it recording like through Zoom? Or are you using like a OBC thing? Or no, no, it's recording through Zoom. Interesting. Cool. Yeah, that's how I do them all now. I record through Zoom. Awesome. It's, it's easy. How's it going? It's going, dude. It's going. Um, yeah, just busy, busy as fuck. <laughs> Which is good. I keep thinking I'm gonna like. Like, oh, I'm going to get done with this, like, arc of work, and then I'm going to be able to relax, but it's, like, not really how it goes. <laughs> yeah. Which is what you want, right? It's yeah, like, I mean, yeah, it's like, you're working, it's good. Um, it's just like, I always tell that story about Olivia, the pinup artist, the famous pinup artist, and I told her, yeah. I, I saw her that one time at a show, at an art show, and I was like, yeah, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to take a break, I'm going to, I know I'll get to a point eventually where i make enough money i could take a break and she's like you know an older woman she's like no it never happens <laughs> i was like all right i just gotta accept that it's like yeah this is just life now <laughs> the best you get is like letting yourself have a day or two off at least that's how it is for me it's like just a day or something or two days right? and it almost feels like like i never planned for those days mm -hmm. they kind of just like happen and then i almost like <laughs> feel it in my body like okay, yeah exactly right it's gonna be the day where i'm just like <laughs> i can't do it anymore it's like yeah. your body will just be like no you're done you, you need a break yeah and that always feels really good too yeah yeah it's it's i i you know last few years i've been doing two weeks at christmas around christmas trying to at least only work on stuff i want to work on because i do enjoy working it's just, you know, you don't enjoy working as much on the stuff that you have to do that's on a deadline. And Yeah, you know. yeah, exactly. And I find myself doing that a lot, too, when I, like, get those breaks. And I'm, then I'm like, okay, what am I going to do now? And then I'm like, <laughs> so I like, start, like, drawing or something. <laughs> I know, I know. That's what, like my wife jokes, you know, as far as talking about retiring. She's like, you're never going to retire. You'd get bored. You'd be bored in a week. And it's true. You know, it, would, it would just start like the retirement arc of like work. <laughs> <laughs> the like, retirement. This is all my years. retirement work. This is my <laughs> retirement period. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so true. Every every artist I know is like this. Or most of them. Most of them are like that too. Where, where it's uh, 
it's just they like to work you know you you kind of have to to make it in this business because it's it's you know it's it's not easy so it's like you have to absolutely love it yeah yeah no i think about what you said i think you said this like years ago you probably say it a lot but just how it's supposed to like um i don't know it's just like it's exhausting but it's like it like fills you up in some kind of way you know and yeah. it's like it just it just feels like a natural part of what you're doing and it's cool because like i talked to a lot of people where it's like oh you're you're lucky that you found this thing that you get to do because oh like i don't know what i'm doing in my life yet or i'm trying to find the job that's going to be my career right. And you've made it to the, you've like found that or whatever. Yeah. You know? So, you know, I have to remind myself of that a little bit when I get um, overwhelmed or like, do I even want to do this? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. We, we just assume that everybody's got, has found their passion and most people haven't, I don't think, especially in mo- or, you know, uh, haven't learned to, or haven't, if they found their passion, they haven't figured out a way to make it their life's work. But I think a lot of people, you know, most people never find their thing. You know, they don't have a thing or they don't find a thing. And it's like kind of a bummer. So we are lucky in that way. Right. Right. And it's weird for me to even imagine what that might be like, you know, because, you know, like most of us have been doing this our whole life to some extent. You know what I mean? So I just, I don't remember a time when I was like sitting around my house, like, what am I going to do? Yeah. Yeah. But I think that's most people. I think most, you know, and it, it, it's like on one hand, we're lucky on the other, because it, it is that satisfying, you ate a good meal feeling when you finish a painting, you know, oh it's like God, super it totally satisfying, is. but, but uh, <laughs> on the other <laughs> hand, there's, it's it's you know it's always the grass is always greener it's like on the other hand if you can if you can settle into not having a thing and not really caring and just kind of appreciating life it's like probably a lot less pressure yeah you know what i mean so it's like you're kind of damned if you do (laughs) you're damned if you do damned if you don't there is no answer i always go back to to my my one final answer there's no answer for anything yeah (laughs) yeah you kind of just got to take it moment by moment honestly yeah and appreciate it yeah 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 um so anyway we have been facebook friends for a long time i believe right yeah yeah i think since around like i don't even know 2013 2014 maybe yeah at least and we've we've shown together before right i don't haven't we shown so. haven't we shown at like the hive or some weird gallery or something? Or... No, no, I, I actually haven't shown in California at all. It oh. will until actually I'm, I've got something at a dark art emporium in November. I could have sworn first... we sh- we showed yeah. together somewhere, but maybe not. <clears throat> um, yeah, you've got just I was talking in the intro, you've got such a unique style. It's like you've got the you've got that style down to where it's like it's nobody else could possibly could possibly have painted that because you know part of it is you have your own style you're a great painter but you you have the style and it's weird as hell your stuff is weird in a way that is not you don't see it very often to be weird in the way that your stuff is it's like i would have never I'll thought that. That, I'll oh you know it's a it's a compliment man coming yeah from yeah me. no it, and it's like it's really flattering to hear you say that too because um you know i feel like uh, and a lot of artists say this too but i feel like that's what every artist is trying to get to is to like that point like oh yeah. that looks like a so-and-so's painting you know absolutely yeah and well, so you, it's, it's you cool to hear you say that <laughs> you did it yeah it's like the 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 just the bizarre combinations and i always know it's yours before i before i see the name so it's great um well so what's the what's the what's your story you know we 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 only know each other casually from facebook just as uh admirers of each other's work i think and aside from that i don't know anything about you so these are kind of like the perfect interviews for the show totally totally um well yeah uh 
I always like reference this story that uh, my mom and dad used to tell me because I don't remember it. But um, like my grandma, my dad's mom used to live with us for a while. And apparently one day, like me and my cousin Milo were like tracing Disney characters, like out of like a coloring book. Mm -hmm. And she like came over with some snacks and he was like, Grandma, I'm going to be an artist when I grow up. And then I like all arrogantly was like, Grandma, I am an artist. <laughs> <laughs> so I always thought that was kind of a cool little like that is great. story. <laughs> Like, I just already identified with it. Like, that's hilarious. I don't remember that, but I definitely always remember drawing and stuff. But, um, but yeah, I don't know. I've been doing it for as long as I can remember. Um, I love it. I always like, I think I started really getting interested in it with like comics and stuff, like trying to draw my own like Spider Man comics and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, like one of my like core, memories of like creating was like drawing like the halloween monsters in the garage with my neighbor and doing stuff like that and then i think my first like official art show was uh kindergarten actually <laughs> like <laughs> yeah i was like six i think and i was i'd like drawn a clown on like some computer paper and my <laughs> teacher my teacher was like can i take this and i was like yeah like fine and she like called my mom and she was like, oh, we got to like put this in a show. She kind of called your mom like, this it... kid's got problems. <laughs> 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 Drawing clowns. No, yeah, kidding. she's like, at least this is going somewhere. <laughs> like he always has his head down like doing like... <laughs> But yeah, I don't remember if it won anything, but that I feel like that encouragement early on was like, oh, so I'm good at this. I should like right. continue, you know, it was like, it was good for my mind to like hear that experience that a little bit mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, Me too. yeah and then and then it was like my my teen years I like didn't do as much visual art I didn't take any art in high school oh wow or middle school or any of that I got really because I didn't want to like do the projects you know what I mean like yeah yeah it was just fun for me and I didn't want it to be like something like that became school yeah so so I picked up the guitar and I started playing music a lot. And then I pretty much did music up until like pretty passionately until like my early twenties. Oh, wow. That's like yeah, similar to my story too. Yeah. And it's like, and I still like miss that immensely. I think about it all the time. Um, Cause I got, we, we never did anything like too big, but we like toured around the country a few times and it was just like a really good, uh cathartic experience to like be a part of like a touring band and stuff mm -hmm. um but then yeah and then I had kids and it kind of just got I was like okay well I can't be like out practicing till 3 a.m and then That's be true. gone for two weeks and yeah. blah 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 so I was like shit I'm gonna try doing you know I can paint and do everything like that like at home you know so I can like readjust my focus towards that and so that's what i did and and i love it i love it and actually actually i don't know if you remember this um i went what was it it was like 2015 i think i went to the hell city um in phoenix hell city like tattoo convention mm -hmm. where you were doing a seminar yeah oh yeah maybe that's where i'm thinking we we that, that's that's where I like met you right like, face to face but at that point man I was like such a shy kid and I remember Mike interviewed me for the uh like to pay monsters oh no way <laughs> and I Didn't just make I cut. just remember <laughs> dude I just remember being like so fucking scared like <laughs> Because he had his camera on his shoulder. She was like, don't even worry about the camera. I'm like, I can't even see your face, though. <laughs> but I was, like, horrified. I was absolutely horrified. Because that was also, I think, the first, like, trip that I had taken alone. Like, I'd always, like, been out with, like, the band or something. Oh, right. And actually on the... How far? Was, back, where Where are you from? Where Where did you travel from? Uh, Colorado. Like, hmm. Denver area. I'm from hmm. Elizabeth. Um, but always kind of been in, like, the Denver area. Okay. And we had actually just gotten back from a tour and we had like two, two like consecutive ones. And we had like met these people in Phoenix and I was like, saw you were doing that seminar. I was like, Oh shit, I want to go like learn. 
from Chet or whatever. And so I like stayed with some people we met on tour. It all just like worked out really good. But <clears throat> but yeah, dude, I credit that seminar, like just the few techniques that we learned in that like three hours, whatever it was, like t- like taught me how to paint basically. Oh wow. Cause I had been trying to do it at that point and um to oil paint and just had no idea what I was doing. Like uh Chris Mars said in some interview like oh for a while i was drawing with oil paint right not like not like painting right yeah yeah and that's what i was doing i was like basically illustrating with a brush like very meticulous like right um, no no medium just like straight paint onto panel basically Mm -hmm. and uh yeah so then you know you showed us like glazing and all this stuff that and i like been in a little bit of art school in college Mm -hmm. and was just too shut off to uh like I was kind of uh like again like super shy but also like kind of knew I had talent and I didn't really need to like pay attention to every little demo (laughs) so like so I skipped I missed out on like glazing and all that shit and I think my teachers were just like it's like just let him do whatever he's doing you know right (laughs) So I never really like learned any of those like basic techniques until that class. And then, yeah, that just like, as soon as I figured out the glazing thing, it like kickstarted me and oh, I was cool. just like, yeah, it just like went off and, you know, 12 wow. hours a day painting. And that's it was, crazy. That wasn't even that long ago for me. I'm, I'm old though. Time, time goes faster for me. Yeah, Doesn't that seem how, like that long ago. <laughs> right, right. That's how I feel since I've had the since I've had my kids. Like I had no idea where the last year went. Like I'm just processing Halloween. Like that's still like fresh on my mind this last Halloween. Right. But yeah. And um and yeah, started doing little shows around uh, the art district in Denver on Santa Fe. Um going to the first Fridays and eventually made some, you know, friends or a specific friend, Cody Kill, who owned this uh, gallery called Red Wolf in Denver. Mm -hmm. And he kind of like gave me my professional start, you know, like he kind of like saw that I had some chops. I was still making some awkward work, you know, like, like I I could, I could paint, but like compositionally and subject wise, I was still like clumsy a little bit. Right. So I think he saw that and he was like, you know, I got to show there like pretty frequently and um we're still like good buddies i talk to him all the time and um and yeah that's kind of where where it took off was uh was those shows at the first friday and um yeah just kept like pushing my technique um trying to get into more places and stuff like that so so you've just been have you been doing like i mean gallery shows or selling direct or how are you how did you kind of how did you like formulate your career a, a sustaining career this is probably the biggest question that uh artists ask me really is how to how to make it work to where you can make a living anyone can like paint you know learn to paint but having an art career is a whole other thing you know you have to figure out how to make how to make it earn for you you know it really is it really is and you know, I don't, I don't want to front that I've like made it, you know, I still like struggle a lot with money. Um, Most of us do. I've made it and I do. (laughs) Yeah. 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 (laughs) There's, there's a funny story that you told too, that I think about all the time where you like pulled up to some like fast food place in your van and some guy recognized you. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Hey, aren't you Chazar? And you're like, in your minivan or something and he, and he was like looking at your minivan he's like aren't you like famous and you're like oh like i still grab this shit <laughs> i don't remember that but it's probably true yeah it's funny is that a but, podcast but yeah. or i don't even yeah it's like i don't even remember remember uh that happening but i'm sure it did <laughs> yeah it, it's funny i remembered it, it was oh hilarious. yeah i do remember it because because my uh my window didn't work so i had to open the door to pay 
<laughs> get the food. So it was like I had to open the door because I couldn't roll the window down and I get recognized for being this famous artist. <laughs> oh, that's so great. And that's such a good testament to how hard fucking life is, though. Yeah, like, yeah. Seriously, yeah. though. You have to make sacrifices but, to do it, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, seriously. And um, and I don't want to get too deep into this because, like, the last, like, couple pods I did kind of became the whole thing. But, but yeah, like, whatever. Once I had my kids their mom kind of bailed so i was like oh, alone shit. with twins oh and my god she she left when they were three months i haven't seen her since and they're six years old now oh my god that's crazy so, so yeah that's when i quit the band and um was like shit and then i i was working at a restaurant in denver and i didn't know what to do about that either like my boss was really lenient and whatever he let me like kind of choose my hours but then it got to the point where it's like i can't afford child care and like this and that. So I had to did leave you have that family? Did you have family to help or anything? Not at the time. Wow. I was like, my mom was in Kansas. My dad was in Texas. Damn. And it was just like, it was pretty crazy for a minute. And it must have been scary as hell. Oh man, I was, I was mortified. It was like a really, really difficult two years um, where I was like, well, fuck, my dreams are over. I can't play music. There's no way I'm going to have time to be an artist. So like, fuck, what do I do? But right. really in hindsight what happened is it like lit a fire into my ass a little bit and i don't think i would be doing what i'm doing right now if i didn't if i wasn't left with them right you know I mean? right so so that's kind of what it became is i was just like all right every day like i said goodbye to like sleep mm -hmm. like which i still get very little of i was just working as much as i could like wanted to get better wanting to like make more connections and like blah 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 and like I said, I don't want to like front that I've like fully made it. Like I left Colorado because it was too expensive. It's like crazy prices here for mm -hmm. housing and whatnot. And I went to Kansas, which is like a fourth of the price. Wow. But I was just depressed as fuck out there and didn't know anybody and was trying to paint and stuff and didn't have like the time to like rekindle and snowball a social existence, you know? Right. So I came back and my dad moved up from Texas um, about a year after I moved back from Colorado or from uh, to Colorado from Kansas. And um, we've been living together ever since. So he kind of like helps me with that. Oh, that's we cool. kind of like share that uh, the financial things and, and whatnot. And um, which is which is great because, you know, with the kids and um I don't know, child care, school, I mean, everything. It's just like, oh, yeah, just wouldn't be able to do it by myself. You know what I mean? So, um, so yeah, but, but what happened was, you know, around the pandemic time, I had my first like solo show at this gallery in, uh, here in Denver called uh, Valkyrie. And I was living up in the mountains and there was like a crazy snowstorm. This is right before COVID, like January uh, 2020. Mm. And, um, you know, hung up the show and did all that. Day of the show, it like snowed ferociously. Couldn't get out of my driveway for the opening. And was like, fuck. And then the gallery closed shortly after that for COVID. And I was like, fuck, well like what other avenues can I like apply my skills to? Cause prior to that, I was like, I'm going to be a gallery artist. This is like all I'm going to do. Like I thought applying my artistic skills towards other avenues besides being a gallery artist was like lesser, mm -hmm. you know, like that's just how I like thought about it. Mm -hmm. And, um, but then I started being like, well, what else can I do? And started doing like album covers and book covers and stuff like that. And, it kind of like took off a little bit. And uh, that's that's really what I attribute a lot of what I'm doing now too, was those like initial albums and stuff like that. And then um, had like a post go viral on Reddit and that got me like oh, a wow. shit of work that I'm still doing now. Wow, like, what, was the, what was the post? It, dude, it was just a stupid sketch that I did. Like, um, <laughs> It, it was so, I did it in like two days. It was like uh -huh. a little, it was on canvas paper, like a 16, 12 by 16 of like, like a samurai, 
like drawing his sword and his his head is like in a larger head it looks like a spirit or something uh, and i called it um forgive me i am not myself like maybe he's about to draw his sword and he doesn't want to like kill people or whatever but there's demons like in him right and it just like clicked with people and wow. it, like, grew up. and it's still like it's gone on like a few like viral uh waves i guess That's where it's so like cool. yeah some some guy recently in italy got it like tattooed on his like rib cage <laughs> like, huge tattoo of it on his rib cage. Like, what the fuck? wow that's great <laughs> but yeah it kick-started a lot of stuff and um and yeah now mostly i spend my time doing um like album artwork honestly oh, i just wow. finished a day that i just posted up right before this um and it's just it's so cool because that's my favorite thing to be doing like is listening to music and painting right and it's just adds another level to that when i like the music and then i get to interpret the image that's going to be associated with it like it's just so satisfying to me oh yeah, yeah. i really love it and then um and then I think the first like big like commercial thing that I did was um a book for a comedian, uh, Sam Talent. The book's called Running the Light. It's right here, actually. This book. Oh yeah. Yep. I saw you uh promoting that. That's great. It's a great painting. Yeah, and it was really cool because it was like he kind of wanted it quickly. So it was just like a, a weekend painting. Um and that book like blew up and he's like sold movie rights to it and like it was on like joe rogan for a minute and uh, wow it, yeah the book like he blew up it blew up and he's like i don't know if you know tim dylan the comedian tim dylan mm -hmm. yeah he's like opening for tim dylan and stuff now he's like i mean he's like he's doing it it's crazy i grew up with him he's from elizabeth as well here in Colorado. oh no way that's so cool yeah, yeah. elizabeth is like <clears throat> super weird fucking place because it's like everybody from there it is like either crazy talented or like a drug addict uh -huh. <laughs> so it was like so it was like you either like find a thing or you like stay there right um and so there's a lot of really talented people from there but yeah he's from there that took off and then from that i wound up getting an album um by this guy nate bergman who's on um velocity and equal vision records which they do a bunch of crazy bands and that was my first like big commercial thing where it's like, you know, they had like marketing people talking to me about like what was okay and not okay to have on the album by like wow. country. Like they're like, oh, in oh, Germany, wow. I don't want it to be seen like this. And like, right. it was, it was crazy. It was like really crazy to like see that part. It was annoying as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was, it was a nightmare, but it was also like a really good learning experience of like, how to apply art to different avenues you know apply yeah. those skills. um and then yeah since then it's just been like you know i've got a little list of albums that i'm going to be doing and wow it's so it, cool it's amazing. yeah it's so fun it's so fun um but yeah like you said uh you get tired of it even even though it's fun and i love doing the work and i love most of the music i've done um i still just want to like do some shit for myself sometimes yeah you know? yeah which is more it's scarce now right yeah but you're young now you, you seem pretty young to me yeah i'm 31 yeah you're, you're young so i didn't even start painting till i was 33 so that's that's, you know. blow, that blows my mind but you already had like a really good i have my awesome career in the yeah in yeah school. yeah yeah i i did but but what you know what I was gonna say was um, uh, that's you know those commercial jobs are as much as you know my whole mythology or whatever is like I left the film industry to do my own thing and you know now I'm doing my own thing. It's like I wouldn't have made it there without doing all of the film work and do and doing where everything was a commercial gig. And I learned so much doing all that commercial artwork, you know, creature designs in Photoshop and sculpting and stuff. I learned so much that I was eventually able to apply to my own work. Um, and, and every time I've done like 
a you know like a 2d because i still do gigs once in a while you know for designs for a music video or whatever there's you know just whatever comes along that's cool like that painting i did for that movie bliss and stuff like that oh yeah yeah it's like those as much as you know being this kind of gallery fine art purist um it, it the the commercial gigs often push you and co- force you to like go places that you didn't know you could and learn new techniques that or or like do something really fast and still have it look good that you you know if you're just kind of left to your own devices doing whatever you want you're not always going to be pushed to your limits in a way in the ways that you would necessarily want to you know so it's it's totally. that, you know so it's actually I think it's really good to um to do commercial work just to to round a a person out as an artist more you know i think it's yeah i I think so too it's like um it's like uh applying like the pressures you would get from like a nine to five you know because it's because it's not just you it's like this person and this person and this person need you need it to be done you know yeah yeah So you kind of learn those communication skills about like, okay, do you need more time? How do you communicate that? Or like, yeah, or whatever it may be, you know, and it's like, yeah, it makes deadlines. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like makes you, I think it makes you a better person, a more well-rounded person. And, uh, you know, it's like, I bring that up because this story I've told about myself, it's where it's like, oh, I finally got free and broke free. And now I just only do my own stuff. It's, uh, it's, it only kind of tells part of the story. Um, and, uh, and it kind of makes it seem like I don't, I don't, I feel like commercial stuff isn't as valuable, but I, but I really don't, you know, it's like, I I feel like every artist has a, a path and some of, some of that involves commercial, all commercial work, some of it, you know, different, some are poster artists, some are whatever, but it's like, if you're able to carve a niche out for yourself doing what you're great at. Um, even if it's a, a commercial gig, it's still great. And I'm, you know, I'm still into that. And, uh, and there, you know, there's something, one thing that I didn't realize until after I was out of effects and uh, doing my own work was this idea of being of service to someone else as like, it sounds weird, but almost like in a spiritual sense, it's like, it's such a good thing to be of service to somebody else in that way. Like when someone's hiring you, especially if you believe in them and you like what they're doing, like working for Guillermo del Toro or working for tool, it's like, you know, you're being of service to them and helping them to elevate whatever they're doing. And that's like, you know, that's the essence of how, you know, being a spiritual person in a way, you know, even though it's a business transaction, but still the basic, foundation of that is kind of like you're helping someone you're helping you're giving them something you yeah. know which is a good thing instead of being like i'm going to express my thing all the time only and so, and so there's really something to be said about being of service to other people that need you you know 100%. what i mean yeah 100 percent. it feels so good like um you know i get like messages sometimes after i finish something like oh like you're a part of the team now you know, right. like so they they'll like a lot of musicians have like a whole team of people that are like helping them, you know, do whatever. Yep. And it and it is it is cool to like take this thing that I primarily did or do still alone in my like studio or whatever, like and and be able be able to be a part of like a larger group that like, you know, you're giving as a visual artist, you're giving a face to like something that isn't visual, you know? Right. You're like you're giving it something people can look at. You know, because like growing up, I always loved like having an album and like looking at the cover and like, oh, then, yeah. Then in the car later, you're like driving, listening to it, and you kind of like have that in the periphery of your mind, you know, the, the artwork, you know, it becomes a part of the music in a way. Yeah, for sure. And, um, and it does feel good to like to contribute to a, a yeah. larger cause. Right, right. Yeah, that's how I, that's how the film industry, um, really is it's really uh it takes so many people to make something good you know the whole crew and everything 
And, the, you know, at the time I was feeling like I'm just a little cog in the wheel and nobody appreciates me. Um, and now I sort of have a different perspective on it now being out for a while it's more like you know you're part of a collective and everybody's making this great art piece if it comes out good you know it's a bunch of artists coming together so anyway i i just think that that's uh i could you know i i see people like <clears throat> nc winters you know nc winters I don't. It sounds familiar, though. <clears throat> he's been on the podcast. He's his stuff is he, he's a poster artist. You know, he could he could okay. easily be doing only his own stuff, but he's got a business making these posters and he does these amazing oh. posters. They are not his artwork is not diminished in any way by it being a poster for a band. You know, oh, yeah. it's just incredible work. And so it's really? like instead of. You know, letting doing a instead of letting a commercial gig diminish what you're doing as a fine artist he's elevating what a commercial gig is you know he's putting fine art into it in this in this way which is like a really cool thing to do you know yeah like what a cool challenge yeah i'm looking at it yeah right, right? it is it is you can tell that he's having fun doing it for sure yeah yeah it's like and it's like it <clears throat> seems like really his niche like it's like you know his right path for him yeah so, totally. So I totally respect that that's cool totally. though i mean <clears throat> sounds like i mean on the <clears throat> on the face of it it seems like doing album covers especially if it's bands you like <laughs> would be really fun that, and that's been the lucky thing is like <clears throat> I, you know i'm at a point now where i need i mean i need money so it's like I, I haven't accepted like everything i've been asked to do but but i've been lucky enough that pretty much everything i've agreed to do i'm like really stoked on oh cool but i enjoy spending time with the music and like thinking about it and like looking at what i'm doing and trying to just like visually interpret it you know um i love it i really really love it a, a, ton, a ton what what are, what are the bands you've worked with um so like nate bergman which that one was a trip um this one which, oh wow that's great yeah there, there's these are on my um instagram and stuff but this one was really cool like um get, you know i got to do like multi panels and design oh work. cool the the sticker on like the actual like side a side b oh excellent yeah that's great and all that and um that was really fun um another really cool one i got to do recently which uh was this uh rapper called the young z He's mm -hmm. from a he's from a group that was like really big in the '90s called the Outsiders, and they used to like tour with Eminem and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he's kind of like having his like comeback, and that's been really fun to uh, to get into as well because um, it's not like a scene I'm super deep in, you know. Right. And um, it just to see this like be a part of this like kind of comeback album is so cool because so many people like loved him and still like he has this cult following and now people are just like coming to it and there's going to be like, this remix album that has a bunch of like really cool people that are going to be on it lauren hill i don't know if you know this oh song. yeah mm -hmm. um and some other really cool ones and um that's that's been really awesome and then um and a couple other rappers uh nick sandal wally clark um the one I just did is for this awesome neo soul band, um, uh, Koi Lim, or it's a woman named Koi Lim. Um, yeah. And... Wow. I wonder if <clears throat> my kid plays drums. You know, my kid's a drummer. And... Oh yeah, I've seen some of those videos. Uh, kind of like a ska type. Yeah, yeah. But he also Almost does. Rock. Yeah, they, they're, they're, they're. He was you know playing uh traditional ska and doing some punk and stuff his main band was playing traditional ska but he was also playing in some some uh funk kind of or are like soul like 60s soul bands okay i'm just wondering if that woman you mentioned was someone he's played with because he ends up playing with like he backs up all these like amazing bands like he's on tour with the uh english beat right now Nice, that nice. Okay. 80s band they were like a huge thing they got songs you've definitely heard if you don't know them yeah name. that's i think that's one of the videos that i saw was him like, <clears> oh yeah and like playing with them you're right yeah but um 
so cool. Yeah, yeah it's, it's such a small, the, the music in, industry is so small, really. I could see yeah, how, especially like, in that vein. Right? Yeah, so, exactly. It's, yeah, everybody knows each other. So I, I can see how you're like, you get in in there and your name starts getting thrown around and it's like so much of it is about networking getting your next gig you know yeah it just like kind of dominoes a little bit yeah yeah um, yeah but then the to go back a little bit the one of the really cool things about uh working with uh, nick bergman's <laughs> team and everything was um like he's like a solo artist but he's been doing like playing backing for other bands and stuff for like a really long time touring mm -hmm. the world for like 20 years mm -hmm. and um but this album has like some of my like heroes on it from like when i was a kid like oh, wow. um, yeah like people from coheed and cambria oh, wow. and uh, my chemical romance and it's just some crazy crazy stuff crazy stuff and i was just like you know in zoom meetings with people where i'm like why why am i here <laughs> you know like what the fuck? i mean to, to stuff like to me stuff like that tells tells you uh you're where you're supposed to be you know when you're like having these impossible sync synchronicities with people that you've admired in the past and you know i've had so many times like that in my career where it's like I can't believe, you know, I'm randomly met this or I'm working with this person I used to be a huge fan of when I was like 18. It's like, you know, I just, that's just my own perspective on it. It seems like uh, when you're on your, when you're on the wrong path, that stuff never happens. And when you're on the right path, that stuff happens more, it seems like to me. Yeah. Like it's almost kind of like pulling you in the direction or it's probably kind of like a, a give and take type of thing, you know? Like you're gonna get out of it what you put in in a way, but mm -hmm. yeah, like you said, also if you're putting it into the right places, it's gonna give back to you in a more special way. Right. Yeah. 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 And that's... yeah, it's been really cool to fit to 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 feel those things. Um, because yeah, at times I'm like, what? What's? I mean, like I'm not like the best artist in the world or anything like that. Like I don't. There's I know so many amazing artists who are like like you and like a a, a bunch of really really great artists and it's like why am i getting some of these opportunities and you kind of get that imposter syndrome a little bit you know yeah i feel the same way though i feel the same way i feel like there's so many I, you know i see artists all the time i'm just like man i i couldn't do that and there's then it's just so amazing what they do and there's so many of them and most of them are like you know 20 years younger than me and it's like <clears throat> that even hurts me a little bit when i see people in their like early 20s doing really well I'm like, what, the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck i was eating like straight up like one slice of bread peanut butter sandwiches at that point you know like <laughs> nothing <laughs> but i mean i don't think uh, i get my i guess my point is that stuff that never goes away you know i'm sure alex gray has imposter syndrome i'm sure chris mars has imposter syndrome i'm sure Every, but every artist I know feels that way at some point. And it's, you know, it's just kind of, for whatever reason, it's something that we have to deal with. Right. You know? And I think that's like a sign too, of like, when you see, like, when I hear a more established artist or something like yourself saying that that still happens, it's like a good, a sign of like a good person behind the, the art. You know what I mean? Because, um, you know, like, I feel like a really, egocentric person isn't gonna be like oh why am i here they're gonna be like of course i'm fucking here you know right, yeah yeah right that's <laughs> true <laughs> and that and that can probably snowball into some pro problematic like personality traits and stuff but you know, um you know it's interesting um since i don't know if you know but i've been doing uh, i got into the nft thing a little bit since january yeah, yeah and um uh, it's been a really interesting learning experience for so many different reasons because <clears throat> it's like there was so much opportunity in there for, for for making good money like not just selling prints like making good money for work for digital work or whatever <clears throat> for good work for bad work whatever it was like it was a, a a seller's market for and now it's right right now it's like crash it's slow it's just the economy's bad so it's like people are bailing jumping ship and then there's like the people that are just waiting you know people in the <clears throat> that come from a traditional 
art background are like, what are you complaining about? This is how it is all the time. <laughs> you know, this is yeah. normal. We're just, so just, I'm just waiting for it to go back up again. But <clears throat> the thing that's really interesting is that you've seen, you know, like normally on Facebook, we're all artists. We're all grinding it out every day. We're helping each other, promoting each other. Uh, but we're focused on our own career. We're po- focused on paying our bills. We're um, and we're all like in it together, like scrappy, you know, scratching our way, clawing our way to success, right? And then no, you know, none of us are even at the point I'm at. It's like I, I, you know, I can't afford to fix my roof, and my paint is my house is like embarrassing and my neighbor is like paints peeling off i can't afford to paint the house um so there's like this camaraderie in that way and we're all i mean everyone's like yeah that's the way it is that's kind of how it is it takes it's hard to make a living but in the nft space because there was so much opportunity and everybody was selling you could see the um the egos some of these people are just like you know, there's been really amazing people in there. Don't get me wrong. And I'm not saying this is all, but you see people that like got, came in that were casual artists came in and in six months made like $300,000 or a million dollars over a year or whatever. And it's like, you see, it's like, it's gone to their head because it had that they haven't gotten the success in a natural, slow way that you're supposed to. Like paying their dues in a way. Yeah, paying your dues. Exactly. So you yeah. see a lot of like, you see what it does to people, you know, what, what assholes it could turn, turn you into. So, I mean, even over, even over a long period of time, it could turn you into an asshole, but, but especially when it's like compressed, the money's crazy and the, uh, the time frame is really short. You just, these people stand out to me, especially, you know, cause I have the background in what 99% of the, of uh, regular artists are going through. And then just <laughs> these people. I bet, I bet you can because yeah, you have that. You've like snowballed that experience and like been through the ups and downs and stuff. I'm yeah. sure some of these kids look like a like a fucking M and M with no peanut in it. You know, <laughs> yeah. like looks really great, but there's like nothing there. When and then and, and then just carrying themselves like they're the shit. You know, yeah. it's like you know not having any <laughs> real appreciation for how lucky they were that they got into it right at the right time and they're actually not that great as you know compared to all the other artists out there they're like kind of a mediocre artist they're good enough that's what yeah that's what we call it it's like good enough (laughs) yeah yeah. um they're not bad yeah like but they're not great so so it's just it's it's interesting to be able to kind of watch it in that way you know and then now that that the markets took a shit everyone's just like people are just losing their shit and bailing and it's just like it's just crazy it's crazy but, yeah that's um, wild i mean because that would cause like in that space people bailing out um i'm not like super savvy with it yet, so excuse me if i'm like not making sense but people bailing out would that cause deflation in prices like across the board kind of it no not it's not really not not I don't know. There's just too many people in it. There's too many. It's it's bigger than that. But um, okay. <clears throat> it's more like a, it contributes to the sense of doom and despair and stuff, you know. And it's like everybody I know has been in crypto. Like the mortality of it. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like everyone that's been in a crypto says is always saying, you know, it's like this is what it was like in 2017. This is what it was like in 2015. It's like it happens. It's part of yeah. the cycle. You just got to deal with it hang in there but uh it's a it's a it's interesting ah damn it can you hear that Uh uh-uh, no oh uh, maybe it's not picking up or someone's getting someone's some someone's getting doing some leaf blowing um, yeah we got somebody mowing out here too you <laughs> well, can hear it on my no end. no i can't um anyway that's just i don't know how we got on that subject but um it's a trip yeah it is it is a trip and it's like it's weird. Social media in general is not um, producing those types. I mean, I was going to bring up that you do get a little bit of that just in social media in general, like people who got lucky and it didn't quite have to pay their dues and found like success, but it is a little different because you are still mm-hmm. like having to do the work and, and be consistent, you know? 
Yeah. Um, yeah. I think I, I think though, yeah, I, that's, you're, you're right though. I think it, uh, with so, social media has done that for sure. It just happens. Um, it doesn't happen as much as in the NFT world, like the NFT is world is full of a lot of um, kind of mediocre artists that are, that are just like top the some of the top dogs that are just making yeah. all kinds of money and everyone kisses their asses. And it's like, God, that's wildness. Wild. <laughs> that's totally weird. And it's like, and the reason is they did the work, but they came in right at the right time, you know, or, or whatever. Right. And like, what I'd be worried about if I was one of them would be like, damn is is it like am i gonna be able to be consistent am i gonna be able to like reproduce this effect again you know and again to a yeah. you know a career level you know? well you know that's another interesting thing about that space is that none of the or most of the rules of the art world don't really apply so you've got um some artists that are just like all over the place not consistent in their style and it's just like a lot of the collectors don't know anything about art too, you know, cause they're That's like a really interesting thing, dude. They're like, new crypt. They're people that made like a shitload of money in crypto and they're just like, Oh, this is cool. This NFT thing is fun, you know? And, and they don't know. Totally. They've never bought a piece of art in their life, you know? So totally. it's, it's a trip. It's just so weird. <laughs> yeah. Now that, now that you mentioned that, I remember like when all this shit was like popping off because like, I was like, like I loved people's shit a lot before all this started and when it happened mm. i was like oh shit like that's right that's so cool yeah, yeah. Like, this is happening and i was like following it pretty closely for a while but mm. but yeah that's one of the things i remember thinking is like some of the some of the people who snuck in there and made a bunch of money like i remember seeing pieces like you know like a dolly painting with like the elephant and they just like animated the legs like really fucking horribly oh yeah yeah and, and make like a shitload of money and i'm like well the pro like an, an art collector isn't gonna buy that right but but one of these <laughs> other crypto guys who isn't you know used to buying art or looking at art right is gonna be like oh damn yeah and then <laughs> spend a shitload of money on that inflate that up and it's like it kind of fucks over the people in that space really doing it right. you know what I mean? yeah 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 i mean it's the perception of it or something i don't it's, know it's it's in a way, it's almost closer to the blue chip art world than it is to the regular working person oh, yeah. world. Because because if you think about it, the blue chip art world is like you got to be connected, you got to get discovered. Some you know, uh, big time gallery or gallerist has to champion this artist, and then they go around or they they went to the right art school and they got connected with the right people because it's like how would you you know how would you be like uh dame how would a damien hurst start a career if you were that was the kind of right. artwork you were doing it's like yeah not like to, what not gallery to, is going to take like your elephant or whatever i mean like not not that not you know it's I, I always say it stands on its own merits. It's fine. It's just, you know, it's a style, it's a certain type of artwork, but how would you even go about having a career with that? It's like, yeah. you have it's to, you have to know the right people that are going to finance you and all this other stuff. And, um, and people just get raised to the top by, by the establishment, you know, and it's just, it's, it's ironic in the, in the, nft space because the whole thing about nfts are like no gatekeepers no galleries but it's like it's just now there's different gatekeepers you know totally, it's like totally. it's, it's like this is a human <laughs> problem it's not a, yeah. it's, it's not a problem of what system you're using it's like a human nature thing you know it's like there's always yeah, going to yeah. be har hierarchies are going to form and someone's always going to have more money or maybe it's like right, a capitalist right. thing I, I don't know you know just the yeah society. it's, yeah, it's got to be like 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 someone providing a product and then someone with capital to like move it has to like choose those the the, the product makers you know like right, right. and they, they kind of get to choose who uh who sinks and who floats you know yeah yeah interesting it's interesting but yeah like you said that's just like capitalist thing it's like so it happens everywhere that there's products and money you know just I think, like, the, yeah, I think the more the more kind of democratizing thing that has happened in the art world. Now that I'm thinking about it, it's not like I've like have this. 
grand theory I've thought about, but just talking about it right now, it's like um, the internet and uh, uh, and uh, like crowdfunding and stuff like that has allowed artists to, instead of being beholden to individual collectors to pay them a lot for one piece of work, it's like the internet specifically the you know crowdfunding and stuff but specifically the internet has allowed um artists to go uh merchandise their work directly and sell prints and sell like to more a wider audience for less money you know yeah yeah and that's been like i mean especially with the pandemic and stuff that's been like you know that's one of my big fears actually it's like what if one day the like internet goes down like how am i gonna like maintain doing shit because that is like how i sell most of my shit is like yeah <laughs> through, through the internet through literally like dms and stuff like that you know what i mean like well uh, if the internet went down <laughs> everybody would be screwed because everything yeah yeah over like the, the whole world like runs on it yeah you're right it's but like, i just worry sometimes like damn have i formed enough solid meaningful connections that like real world connection if i didn't kind of... have access to the internet could i still go out there and sell my work you know right. i think yeah. about that a lot but um well, but the, i love it and it's like it's integral it's integral to everything i'm doing you know yeah everything think... artists are doing in general it's like yeah yeah that's, that's what i'm saying it's i think it's just it's every every artist now if you're not on the internet, you're just like, you almost don't exist in a way. Yeah. But yeah. It's almost like the, the pre-internet success, those artists seem like they're okay. But, but most of the artists working today are like, you know, yeah. Like, it's like how they do their shit, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, one thing about, <clears throat> I've thought about this is um, selling online, uh, I've got, you know, every time I print a label and ship, I've got the person's name and address and sometimes their phone number and uh, their email. Not that I would abuse that, but I'm just, I, I, sometimes I think about like, I wonder if I should do like cards and mail them physically, you know, cause I've got hundreds and hundreds of, of addresses uh, just because i have a record of everything i've shipped and um yeah yeah just like as a marketing thing like hey you know 10 percent off use this code just for physical mail or, or whatever you know and and, and right. you know you can kind of if you have that if you are selling online you 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 have record of of people where people live and you could always uh you know, almost like a mailing list. You could yeah, yeah. Like mailing list. Yeah, it's like an old. Even school. though it might always be not always be consensual, it's like <laughs> yeah. you still use it like that. <laughs> it's an old. Yeah, it's like an old school mailing list. Yeah, um, but the, you yeah, know that awesome. that's one thing that uh, a lot of people talk about too when it comes to uh, marketing is, uh, you know, not so much that the internet's going to go down, but what if a social media platform that you're selling on goes down, which is definitely possible when you look at yeah, MySpace, you know, like yeah, it, yeah. I had 30,000 people on MySpace and I was like selling through there. And then it just like overnight seemed like, boom, nobody was there anymore. Yeah. That is, that's wild to think about. Yeah. yeah I remember that happened to uh, Linnea Strid. Oh like, yeah. A few years ago. Yeah. She like lost her Instagram. Yeah, or it gets hacked or something. A thousand or... followers or some shit. And it's like, damn, like, I know she sold a lot through that page. <laughs> and I think she wound up getting it back, obviously. Or yeah. she just, her new page, she, like, tanked up, like. But, um, but yeah, I mean, that can be freaky for some people, for sure. Well, that's why every artist, and, and I'm bad at this myself, uh, I have a mailing list. I don't utilize it, but I'm going to, I'm going to use this as a reminder to remind myself to reactivate my mailing list. I have an email list um you know just put an e get an e subscribe to like mailchimp or one of these email lists and just have it on your website oh, that's such a good idea and and that because that's what uh josh g was saying um when he was on the podcast it's like it's so important to have like he was saying have a website that's like your home base huh. and and in case all the places go down and have a um a, a mailing list so that you yeah. can stay in contact through email with all of your buyers. 
Yeah, that's like why I got a website was back in that first Josh Key episode. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Which, that was forever ago now. What was that, like 2016 or some shit? But uh, yeah, yeah that's why I like, got a website was because of that. Because I was like, God damn, that's a really good point. Yeah. Yeah, it's important. But yeah, it is a really beautiful thing. Like, like when that Reddit, first Reddit post, like went viral with that samurai painting, it was like, overwhelming but in like such a great way and and then I didn't really realize like I got work really quickly got like whatever a bunch more followers and all that stuff but it didn't really hit me till I did these like like a little postcard series right like it was like the last like eight paintings or something that I did mm -hmm. and I made like cool like glossy postcard prints that made little boxes for them so like the packaging looked cool and stuff and I was just like, oh, I've got these. And I, my plan was to just put them in with orders, you know? Right. So like someone buys a printer, like a painting or something, they get like a cool card. But then I was like, shit, well, I'll just put them in like packs of five or something and sell those. And they went like all over the world. And it was like, so really? it was the first time I walked into a fucking post office with a box full of shit to send out. <laughs> That's cool. You know, it was such, it was such a cool feeling. And it was like, yeah just like so thankful for the internet for that for that reason you know yeah and that and that's also the like the idea of selling to a wider audience of really inexpensive stuff and making your money that way right right you yeah that, that's when that clicked for me too like it's, it's nice to have uh more affordable products because you have like so many fans who would like love a painting but are never gonna get to that financial yeah. point where they provide an original you know yeah yeah. So it's good to have those options and whatnot to uh, yeah yeah it's like there's for for me it's like people that can't afford originals they can buy a study if they can't afford a study they can buy a print if they can't afford a print they could buy a book you know or a t-shirt or you know whatever the cheaper stuff i have or or an eight by ten i have like these eight by ten open editions for like 20 bucks it's like most people if they really want it they could afford 20 bucks you know uh totally totally and like yeah. even and i and i know these fans are out there because like i'm a fan in this way to some people like or some bands or whatever where it's like yeah i could like stream the album on apple music or whatever but i want like contacts with this band or whatever i want to hold the vinyl you know right i want, yeah. to, like, I want to support them i want that yeah. contact, and i want to have the object like in my vicinity because it's inspiring to me you know yeah like like elevates my environment you know mentally and physically you know yeah yeah it's like collecting it's a it's a collect it's a collectible yeah. in its own yeah. you know totally totally yeah, yeah it's, really, it's a really awesome thing it's cool um, that vinyls come back like that in that way oh my god it's so cool dude it's so cool it's like vi it's there's vinyl there's backups at, at vinyl it's hard to get there's so few vinyl pressing places that there's like a waiting list to get vinyl pressed now from what i've heard it's like because it's because it's, yeah. it's everyone's doing vinyl again which is amazing yeah. dude yeah like this this young z album i did like it came out like uh maybe like over a month ago now i think i mean time is so fucked up right now i don't even know but <laughs> it's like it, it came out a while ago but the vinyls still are not out yet Right, yeah. <laughs> like they're still working on getting those out and it's like been out for a while. They've been like pre-ordered, sold out. Um, second orders have been like another pre-order thing has gone out and it's like enough of them are shipping yet, you know? It's like, <laughs> it's crazy, it's crazy. Yeah, that's that's another thing about um, crowdfunding that, you know, I think it was, uh, what's her name that started the whole Kickstarter? Can you hear that now? Uh -huh. Wow. It's like, I can't. Wow, right outside my window. You have a very um, nice isolated mic. <laughs> yeah, it is a pretty, pretty good little mic. Uh uh, what's her name? What's her name? She was like the first person to stand up and say crowdfunding is a good thing. Kickstarter is a good thing. She did a whole like, I think she wrote a book about it. Uh, oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. She's a singer, Dresden dolls. Really? What's oh, what was her name? I know, I know the scene of Dresden Bells. I can't think of her name. Uh, Amanda Palmer. Amanda Palmer. Yeah, yeah. It was like she was kind of the big mouthpiece for that kind of, um, 
you know, uh, model of supporting of artists getting support for fans and fans supporting artists. And that was really pretty revolutionary. The idea it was for me, it was like when she, she initially was saying, it's like, there are fans out there that want to support the artist. It's not all about getting something. It's like, they want to help support an artist. And, you know, it's like, you know, now that I do that with a lot of Patreons, and youtube subs if i see someone i think is doing something that's that i think is important even though i don't really partake of the content and if i have the money i'll just you know throw them a couple bucks a month or whatever and and just to support you know um yeah and that's yeah. like so new that's such a weird it's so antithetical to the way everything is presented nowadays you know yeah and it kind of goes back to what you're saying earlier about like giving someone something like it's not all about like your shit sometimes it's like it's good to like you know support another project another another artist's uh, trajectory um, yeah and it's cool and it's like when you find those people it's cool it feels good to see them succeed you know right it, it fills you up in a way too you know yeah and i think that comes back to you and like in the kind of a weird like woo woo kind of way i think that that comes back to you a little bit, you know, you start to become a part of a community on some level, you know, yeah. when you're just giving to, to people who you want to see go farther, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, uh, in a way you are helping to create the work, you know, it's like every, every, everybody who supports me is <clears throat> like a little piece of the puzzle that allows me to create new work. So they are, um, it's almost like, investors in a weird way or you know yeah. co-creators in a way it's like uh it's it's or just, interesting or just like straight up like like pre-patreon the patron a patron right you know? yeah yeah it's yeah being that of that person where you can like you know being in position to help in that way is so cool and like you know every every band or like artist that i do shit for it's like i love when they come out with new shit like they're gonna come out with a music video or something i feel like I'm a part of that now. Like I'm going to promote that. And it, oh, feels, yeah. it yeah. feels good. It feels yeah. so good. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's yeah. part of what makes it worth it. You know, like taking such long breaks from doing my own stuff. Uh, it, it makes it worth it to, to feel a part of that project, you know, cause then it's like, cause then it does come back to you, you know, like you don't do it in a selfish way, but it, you are also promoting yourself if you're a part of that you know what i mean right yeah and then someone's going to see the music video go back to the album maybe they like the art and then maybe you're next on the list you know what i mean yeah it's cool yeah. it's like a, a give and take thing you know yeah yeah it's it's you know people have this idea that it's like if you're i don't know that it can't be mutually beneficial like that makes it a bad thing or something when it's like it can be you know you can you can be supportive and being supported in that way as well. You know, you can love the band you're working for, but still be getting paid to work on that thing, but also be doing it because you love the band. You know, it's like life is just not this black and white thing. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. this is a problem. Yeah, everywhere now. What's that? I said that becomes the icing kind of too. Cause you know, I'll get like caught up in the projects where it's like, you know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm giving it a little too much for the money that I might be getting or something, but I get like passionate about it. Yeah. You know? Right. <laughs> and then it's like, Oh shit, I'm already getting it. Like this is already paid for. Right. You know what I mean? So it's just like icing on the, on the cake. Yeah. The making the work, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's really, really cool. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, I've, I've been in that situation before also. It's like, well, they didn't pay for this much, but I have to do it. <laughs> it's too cool. Exactly. It's like it deserves it. <laughs> yeah, at some yeah. point, it's like a part of you and it deserves the attention that you like naturally want to give it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and and nothing feels worse than presenting a piece of artwork that feels like it's missing something or not finished or, you know, you could have done better. It's like, you know, yeah. it's that it, it's it's different than a normal job in that way. You know, it's like, a, um, there's definitely like a, a weird it's a weird cosmic thing happening there <laughs> so. yeah like there there is like a passion element that you can't really ignore mm -hmm. but i totally have had that happen too where it's like i'm like really proud of something and then it's out of my hands 
And um, one sec. Thank you, bud. That's so cool. Thank you. Sean <laughs> made me a little. Wow. That's yeah. cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Man, I used to be little, like little Batman Star Wars guy. I don't know if you could see that. <laughs> yeah. I think I used to make those spaceships when I remember making them just like that with with Legos where it's like a yeah, plat- we... platform with walls and like guns in the front and then no roof. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, it's a little speeder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love that. But yeah, like sometimes it goes, it gets out of your hands and I've had that happen before. I'm like so proud of something and then I pass it off to the next person. And then when the product is out, it's kind of a bummer because it's like maybe someone took it upon themselves to like edit some things or like, you know, change certain things. And it's just like did not print well or stuff like that which can be a, a really big bummer like yeah i i did that one time i, I did an out I, one of the few cd covers i did was for this band charred walls of the damned it's like some metal band and um it was actually a guy back when i used to listen to the howard stern show there was a guy on the show that was in that band because he was from like a, oh, what was the name iced earth he was like this amazing drummer but he worked on the show and um he was he was on the show talking about how he's doing an album and i was i just like i think i just emailed him like hey i done work for tool let me do your album because i just thought it'd be good promotion and he seemed like a cool guy like a funny guy and um and uh at that point it was like i was like offering just to do it for free just to just for promotion because i figured it's gonna get mentioned on the howard stern show yeah Uh that's a big audience and uh, this guy, Richard Christie. And to his credit, he's like, the, there's a budget, you know, we have a budget, so we're going to pay you. And it's like, he could have totally done it, you know, not paid me, which is super cool. But anyway, um, I was like, I did the artwork. I finished it. I've painted it. I finished it up in Photoshop to get everything right. I sent a printed, I was like, I don't know what your color calibration is for your system, but here is a hard copy. This is what it should you calibrate to this print out this hard piece of paper so that you'll know what it's supposed to look like to get the color right and it came out and it's just super dark it's and it's so dark it's like it, the whole thing is just too dim even when when they when that came out howard stern was like the cover's too dark <laughs> on the radio show and i was like oh man Damn it. yeah that's gotta you know i thought bit. people wouldn't notice and he's like yeah well you know he's like i mean that sucks yeah yeah he was like you fucked it up he was telling me richard christie you fucked it up oh yeah ouch but but, yeah it's like you know it's out of your hands you know at that yeah and it does get so complicated having that having the hard reference point uh physical reference point i feel like is such a good idea too because everybody's screens are different i know i know everybody like some people like to have the brightness halfway down on their phone and shit's not gonna look like it does with the brightness all the way up or the computer screen or the tv or whatever it may be like everything is calibrated differently so it's like you got to kind of look at it on multiple things and and try to find like the goldilocks zone yeah like where it's gonna look the best God, see, that's another thing. I would I would have never learned this shit had I not started doing commercial stuff where I'm like, right. I had to learn how how to deal with like the templates for the printer and like all of that stuff, all that stuff. It was a uh, excellent. I mean, it was hell, like I said, but such a great learning experience that I've like used those skills several times since, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And everything you're, you know, learning through that too, as you, as you go on, because it's like your career is going to change. Like I said, you're young, you're, you're, it will continue to develop. And, um, you know, that's sort of how I was able to feel good about my time in effects at first is, um, uh, because I really felt like once I started painting, I was like, oh shit, this is really, this is where my passion is. It's not in makeup effects anymore. When I was in effects, it was totally, that was it. I was just this obsessed kid from age 12 on. It was like, I was so into it. And then I, I got there and I did it and it was like, okay, that's not my passion anymore. It's just like, I I've done everything I wanted to do. I learned everything and kind of the thrill is gone now. It's not enough to keep me in this field. And um, 
so I was, you know, I get, I got out to get into fine art, which was, you know, fine art is something I can keep developing myself. If I feel like I need to be challenged, I can switch things up. And, you know, when you're working on a movie, you're kind of limited to what they're going to let you do. So you're not always going to be challenged, but um, <clears throat> the way I was able to sort of like, Oh, I'm sorry. Once I started painting, I was like feeling like, ah, oh, cause I was, like I said, 33 and I was like, oh man, I wasted my whole, the last 15 years working on, not working on my own fine art stuff. And the way I was able to kind of feel better about that was to realize that it was uh, everything I'd done up to that point was so important to being a better painter and a better artist in general you know, all that background in sculpture made it like I could to where I could paint things that look three dimensional, three dimensional easily because I had just been staring at 3D forms for 15 years and sculpting them and seeing how light, and sh you know, just subconsciously. You get like stored in there. like programmed. Yeah, yeah. It's like pro a programmed thing. And so, <clears throat> so uh, that was like a, a good realization for me to have. So all of these things it's just like it's the same thing with you know getting into the nft thing it's like part of what what is so exciting for me artistically is like i can do um my normal art i can animate it which i love digital stuff because that i've got a background in digital work that i had to Dude, I drop you know but and also but also i can incorporate my music which was music was like a big thing for me too before i got into digital stuff i was in a band for like 10 years trying to make that work and songwriting and recording i love all that stuff so it's it's i was able to for me the nfts are cool because it's a way of combining like everything i i know everything i was into into one art thing whereas like the paintings you know i love painting i'll never stop painting it's great but i can't incorporate my music into the paintings you know i, I can't yeah so it's really uh creatively just so stimulating to be able to you know okay now i'm gonna now i'm gonna animate this painting i did and then okay now i'm gonna figure out audio using you know recording it and using music it's like it's so cool so it's really makes all of that stuff matter in in my mind you know what i mean i could use all that stuff absolutely it's like it's like with the with the kids and whatever i was like oh my life's over now but it's like no i couldn't i wouldn't be doing what i'm doing without incorporating that you know and that's not right. even necessarily art related unless you want to get like philosophical about it but like it does like all your experiences kind of like culminate into what you're going to do as an artist like right even, th even things that seem unrelated that's still something like clicking psychologically that's going to eventually inform yeah. what you're going to make you know what i mean for and sure i totally forgot to uh I skipped over like probably the most important part of my like becoming an artist. And it's, it's because I was doing um, like completely insane amounts of LSD, but <laughs> there, there's, but, Oh, by the way, before I get into that, um, the, the digital stuff, you, the studies you've been putting on the Patreon, like, uh, I, I forget about Patreon sometimes. Like I support people on there, but then yeah, I, same I here. The yeah, I know, same here. <laughs> and I open it the other day, and I'm seeing all these digital studies you're doing. They're fucking so cool, dude. Like, oh, thanks, thanks. I was blown. I was blown away by them. They look so great. Thanks. But um, but yeah, no. The, actually, the the moment of my life where I decided, like, oh, I'm supposed to paint. Like that's what I'm supposed to do. I was living in this house in Denver called the uh, mouth house it was like actually a bunch of kids from elizabeth um mostly kids from elizabeth we got this like old rundown victorian era like mansion in denver wow that sounds in, fun in, <laughs> oh it was it was really cool it was a lot um it was disgusting when we got there like i remember um i think it was my buddy clay like taking a shovel to scrape the grime off of the living room and it literally like curled up <laughs> like, like disgusting shit nasty but there was 19 of us living in there at oh the, my god and it was insane and what we did we cleared out the bottom floor and we had we had shows in there we had touring bands come in the first year we had like over 250 shows so almost every day oh my god and, yeah crazy. And we, but we like won an award for it and like this local magazine and stuff and um and actually they're uh this guy Trayvon's making a 
podcast that's kind of kind of tell the story of it um he's kind of going around to, he's like finding all of us now that we've all like dispersed oh how cool but um but yeah it was in there uh just had acts it was kind of like my like merry pranksters period you know mm-hmm. where it was like everything was like so free rent was like 120 bucks with 19 people in there so it's easy to make rent and um i was working at like a hot dog place downtown and just doing doing acid like uh amongst other psychedelics like you know four or five times a week like too much wow like, too much. <laughs> to, the, to the point where even when i wasn't taking it i was still there oh you know? wow yeah that is too much yeah way too much and it went on for probably like eight six eight months of that heavy use wow which you know i did have to like pay for that i did pay psychologically for that for a while I had to really like, kind of, oh i had to like re rebuild my i feel like i had to relearn everything from this new perspective you know like wow like there was definitely my life before that and then my life after that you know but i just remember there was one day i was like i used to just i didn't have an easel or anything and it's this crazy synchronistic thing like i didn't have an easel i was just hanging stuff up on my wall to paint and then i remember saying that one day like oh my god it'd be so great to have an easel get up in the morning and there's just a giant metal easel in the backyard (laughs) just nobody knows where it came from it's just in the fucking backyard and i was like all right that, wow. I think that is a sign <laughs> yeah. right and, and it was like that night i was like i was tripping and i was like it just hit me like i was just working on this painting that i still have in my closet it's it's not done it's still not it never got finished but um but i was working on it and i it just like clicked like again it's like that feeling in your body almost it's like a physical feeling that correlates with like the the cycle the thought Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it just like felt like that like i could see a future in it you know i could feel a future in it right you know what i mean yeah totally and i just like turned to my roommate at the time who was like i had like a closet in in the room that i had upstairs and um in the closet there was like a sink randomly (laughs) and he had his mattress in there like under the sink (laughs) it was bad we had 19 fucking people in this yeah that's crazy it was insane I just remember turning to him and being like, I'm supposed to do this. Like, <laughs> I, I, I mean, like okay. Like, I don't, <laughs> like, who knows what I'd be doing? I was just like, we were tripping all the time. But <laughs> but yeah, it was a lot of that that informed like uh, the risk, um, justified the risk for uh, the sake of creating. Like I started going to, you know, Red Rocks Amphitheater. Mm-hmm. Um would go up to Red Rocks for like the hippie shows, right? So like further or like string cheese incident would come and they'd play for like four days. Mm-hmm. Half the people there don't have tickets, right? So outside Red Rocks, this like temporary like mini Black Rock forms, right? Like right. A, a community happens. Yeah. It's and like so the I Grateful Dead, there. Grateful Dead yeah. shows. Exactly. It's exactly the same. And um that's kind of where I started selling art for the first time was like walking around the lots that have like a bag full of prints and like a little uh, portable paint setup. And I would like paint in the parking lots. Um, sometimes I'd have a friend with me playing music. We'd like take two parking spaces and one would be like our little performance area. And like, and then I'd sell stuff out of the back of the car and stuff. And yeah, that, that whole period was a very like shifting um it was a shifting period for me you know where i was yeah. like i was like yeah i love playing music and up to that point i was like i practiced almost all day every day trying to get shows be in bands do all that and then it just hit me like i feel like i feel physically a future in doing this right know? and that's when it started like i was drawing or painting every day like And being hard on myself too, where I would like look at something and immediately be like, this is what I can do better. You know, Mm -hmm. I would, I wouldn't like try to find reasons to like something that I did. Mm -hmm. I would be like, okay, this is what I'm going to do different the next time and immediately change. And like, I just kept doing that again and again and again. And I still do. I think now, like, like you said, I think I've kind of like, you know, crystallized some kind of style or like some kind of a signature and the essence of what I'm doing. But but it came from every piece. I, what can I, what am I not doing? 
Right. Or how yeah. is it, how is this different from a, someone else's painting that I think is good? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's so important to do. It's yeah. You got to be like, you, I don't want to say you got to be your own worst enemy, but you got to be your best, your worst critic. Right. But not, not to the point where you like shit on yourself so much that you really do think you suck, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You got to just do it enough that you can recover in little steps. Like, Oh, you didn't do this right. Recover from that and do a little bit better. Yeah. You got, you get, yeah. You got to be critical with yourself and honest with yourself and not let that get you down. No, you know, you have to have the confidence to be like, okay, I can fix that next time. Yeah. You know, um, that's, I mean, that's, that's a problem online, you know, where people post a picture and everyone just says, it's amazing. And it's like, you know, they want to be supportive, but you know, I see stuff all the time where I'm like, I could, I could help this artist just with like one sentence that would probably change, you know, how they paint, but it's like, you end up looking like a dick and they didn't ask you. People don't want to hear it. It's yeah. Like they and want they, it. they want to get better, but they don't want to like, they don't want to cross the bridge of a uh, criticism. You know? Yeah. Yeah, man. I learned that lesson it's the hard way when I I've told this story before you, so you might may have heard it, but I posted a picture and somebody commented, this was, I don't know, 10 years ago or something. Um, It was on Twitter, I think. And it was some like, art school or a brush company or some random art related person was like, you know, if you were to do this with the values here, it would stand out more and look better, blah, blah, blah. And I was so like, immediately the first thing I was like, fuck that person. Don't they know who I am? You know, like I, I, I you know, I was like, I had a, you know, I've got a career. I did stuff for tool, blah, blah. And I was like, <laughs> you know, total ego thing immediately. And then I was like, okay, wait a minute. And then I was like, oh, they're totally right. And it was, and it, and it, my, it leveled me up. Every painting after that, like leveled me up because it was something that I had been missing. And so if I would have just continued to be an asshole and, you know, let my ego run the show, I, I would not have gotten <clears throat> better, you know? And it was like, I was like, I wrote back, I was like, you know, of course, the first thing I was going to be like, you know, fuck you, blah, blah, you know, write some yeah. response. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. And, and, and instead I was like, wow, thanks. That was really helpful. And the person wrote back, wow, we're not, I'm not used to getting responses like that. Whatever. Yeah. Like I'm a, I'm a troll. Like I'm used to the hate. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> no, they were like, honestly offering, like they were doing the thing I just said, where like, you see, interesting. Stuff, okay. I'm going to help them. It was like they were because they were right. It was it'd be one thing if it was just some asshole saying something that wasn't true, but it was like yeah, honest offered in good faith. And so it was just funny that that I gave that the that response, and then they were all shocked. Like <laughs> so I was expecting you to kind of jump down my throat, but yeah, it's it's that's so awesome. It's crucial though. It's crucial to be if you want so to get good, you have to you have to see what your faults are. Yeah, um, you got to embrace that the pain a little bit like yeah i think i think it was a uh, acquaintance of mine who's a painter here in colorado he's, he's really great his name's jack sure um s-h-u-r-e uh mm -hmm. he i think it was him recently that was like if someone tells you something that hurts your feelings about your work then that's probably a sign that you should lean into what they were saying oh uh, yeah or at least um, consider it you know <laughs> yeah yeah like you kind of like, like it might have been Carl Jung or maybe Joseph Campbell's that says, uh, the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. Right. Yeah. Right. And it's kind of like that feeling sucks and we do fear it and we try to avoid it, I think. But, um, but sometimes that really holds the thing that we're trying to get to. Yeah. Just like has that pain associated with it that we don't want to experience. Yeah. You know? So it's like, you know, do you want the thing? Do you want the prize or do you not? You know, because you have to get over yourself if you want the the prize, if you want the real thing. If you really want the thing, you have to suffer in that way for it. You have to be willing to, yeah. you know, um, uh, take a back seat to your ego and 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 hear it and fix it, you know. Um, right. And then that spills into just, you know you as an individual like just being a better individual 
you know? yeah yeah it's like life ad- advice it's like a good uh, all the you know that so many of the it's funny because i was thinking one time i'm gonna write a book like because i would always think of these principles of art and i was like that's you know like uh you know having your values correct values makes you a better painter it's like having proper values makes you a better person you know different kind of values oh it's like the, it's, the pun too. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, oh, you could do like a self-help book, you know, for artists that's kind of like based on art terms. Dude, um, yeah, that's so funny. I think Victor Wooten, I think Victor Wooten has a a book or like a instructional tape that is that. It's like a how to play bass instructional experience or whatever but it's all like philosophical so you can kind of see everything he's saying in two lanes you know man i i recently saw a victor i went on a little down a victor wooten rabbit hole on youtube just for like a day good and uh yeah he's amazing and um he he because i still i'm you know i it's like i got to a point guitar playing and i never really could get past it because i was i didn't i was self-taught so i don't know any you know, very little technically, you know, I was never able to really play good leads. I had to kind of like figure out, write the lead and play it because I yeah. couldn't improvise because I just didn't know what I was doing because it was all by ear. And so he did a this one video where it was like completely blew my mind. He said, you're always a half step, half step away from being on the right note. When you're improvising it was like yeah that's okay yeah yeah yeah. it was my, like my buddy oh, kevin says that all the time yeah it's amazing it's like if i would have just known that back then because it's you get any explained why you know because of the the notes on the fretboard and stuff yeah it's like if it sounds right you go up or down half a step and you're in the right yeah yeah just, the right just make the mistake confidently yeah and go yeah to the next fret yeah and, and he was he was <laughs> and he was making the point how in improvising it's like if you resolve on the right note you're fucked up note is like color and it make you know as long as you're resolving on the right note and it was it was just like and there were some other things he did too too about um playing rhythmically is really important he was talking specifically i think with bass playing but he was talking about how important the ri- playing rhythmically is to just playing you know it's so much about but anyway side side from, i just thought that was like that was the biggest music revelation i probably had in my adult life just that simple yeah, you know, it's like they don't. Why doesn't that should be like a t- taught in every, you know, e- that should be everyone should know that that plays an instrument. It, and it's like I never knew that. No one ever told me that. Yeah, yeah, that's really good. Yeah, like I said, my my buddy Kevin, he was in my band that I played with before I quit. Um, he's a crazy bass player, but he said that all the time. Like, oh yeah, you're always one note away from the right note. Yeah, that's yeah, so, it's really cool. <laughs> super cool. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, Oh yeah, I was I was th- the, the the thing about the uh, the um the art principles it's like they really you know most of the art principles it's weird how you know especially particularly oil painting and stuff but I think it's it's true with sculpture and everything and just how to construct a good piece of art it really you can relate it to like like you're saying to being a good person or having a fulfilling life it's really weird when you, when you think about it, you know, it's like usually the stuff that you need to do to make you a better painter is also the stuff you have to do in your regular life to make you a better person. It's just like, you so know. True, man. it's so true. It's like, I think it's because art is such like a, um, of any, of any kind, like music, like filmmaking, whatever, writing. It's such like a, it's pulling from like who you are in your deepest, even if you're not trying to, you know? Because right. all the decisions you're making are like a reflection of your like psychological environment kind of. And so it's like, yeah, as you like are working on a painting or something in front of you, you, re- you really are kind of chipping away and sculpting your, your mind and, and like who you are, your, uh, your neural pathways. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. you can like rewrite neural pathways making a painting. Right. Which is it's like, it's like therapy in a way. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like, yeah. you know... No, go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> I, was, I, was just, I was just gonna say like yeah yeah because like, like in therapy you're, you're getting your mind out in front of you through a therapist right and so that you can like work upon it mm-hmm. and that's really that's really what you're doing creating something right yeah that's, you're getting that's your mind out in front of you yeah that's you what I was, that's what i was gonna say actually was um it's so amazing that 
<clears throat> especially if you're doing uh, weirder type work or, or you're, you're doing stuff that's less, um, you know, to where you're like thinking about trying to do it a certain way, but you're more like exp really expressing yourself in a, in a more of a, um, whoops, more of a, you know, just kind of like automatic drawing type of way or wherever, totally. whatever. It's, it's like, it's incredible access to parts of yourself that you, you know, you couldn't get any other way. Totally. You know? And it's, it's so it's weird. Like yeah. Yeah. It is like, it's like, it's, I've always like said that, that it's like making a painting is really like uh, having a dream. Like, you know, once you get to a level where you can like, start to develop your thoughts in an automatic or improvisational way in front of you it, it is almost like having a dream when you're not thinking about it you know right because then all of a sudden at some point in the painting you're like holy shit there's like a narrative here that i never intended to make yeah it's you so know? weird it's uncanny it's so weird and it's like waking up from a dream and you're like that was the weirdest shit ever and you think <laughs> about it for a day if you didn't don't forget it yeah. And you're like, damn, okay. So that probably was like a reflection of this thing that happened, you know, or like however, however it's going to be. But yeah, it's so trippy. You can like form stories out of like not aimlessly going somewhere, you know? Like, right. Yeah. Bizarre. Well, that's the, 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 uh, the, my dystopia book, The Field Guide, I just came out with. I just finally finished and, um, uh, yeah, I'm excited it... to get that. That's been, that's been a long time in the making, man. Oh, God. Congratulations for being like done with that, too. Thanks. Yeah, I still have a, a bunch to ship. Um, did you support the Kickstarter? Oh, yeah, dude. Like, oh, that's shit. When, that's when I was still in school. Okay. Like, yeah, I know. I know. Don't remind me. <laughs> it's embarrassing. <laughs> you have to, I, I'm waiting to hear back from people with their current addresses. So you need to text me your, your address and then I'll ship it right out. Okay. Yeah. 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 So I, that's part of the problem is I don't have access. It's like, it's a long story, but I have to do like updates on the Kickstarter and wait for people to message me their current address. Cause it's been so long. Half the people have moved. <laughs> so it's like, I can't just anyway. Um, but that's the weird thing about the dystopia book is that, <clears throat> you know, Mike interviewed me about all the paintings and then <clears throat> it was clearly there was a society and a culture and territories and there was a world there and beyond that there's like it parallels it basically parallels the real world you know and i don't know if people are going to put two and two together but there's like you know it's like it's a, it's it's a reflection it's like a weird version of rea of regular reality that I would have never yeah. thought of, never would have come up with that. Like, I feel like I'm not capable of intellectually coming up with Ooh, that. Sort of thing. That's one of the trippiest parts about that, that thing that happens. It's like, at the end, you're like, I could have never sat yeah. down. There's no way. And been like, I'm going to make that painting. Yeah, there's no way. Or, yeah, if you were to like, like uh, intellectually, like, I feel like I couldn't have thought it up, but I can, I can make it through this weird process it's called painting or drawing or whatever that's right, how right. i could do it it's like a form it's different language it's a different way of thinking but like intellectually traditional left brain thinking i would never have come up with that in a million years you know it's yeah. weird it's really it weird and i think it really does come down to that that word process is it's like it, it's almost like painting i mean again creating in general but painting is like you're almost like this, an alchemist or something and you've like like the result isn't knowable at the start but you know the process and if you like do the, right. this certain amount of things right you can like make this gold happen you know right yeah you mix these certain ingredients together like literally with the paint but then also with just like how you start building up forms and and however you do it whatever you find that works the process is like that alchemical uh key kind of to get right. there yeah it's it, it it also feels like another way to um describe it because if you think about it it's it's so weird 
I mean, that's so weird that anybody even wants to do this. Like, why do we even want to do it? It's why is it fun for us? It's like some people wouldn't think it was fun at all. It's like we have this drive to do it. And the other analogy is like there's a thing that is inside of you that you don't have access to, but it wants to be expressed for some reason. You know, and so it feels like this thing separate from yourself that wants to be honored in a painting or it wants to be a story that wants to be told. And so it gives you the impulse to create it. And by following your your passion and following your your um, <clears throat> impulse and also wanting to serve the painting um, to make it as cool as possible, you will manifest this thing and uh but it's really, I think it's not separate from you. It's not like, it's almost, it feels like a separate entity or something is kind of going through you, but it really is um, you just like kind of talking to yourself, just like you're saying in, in dreams, you know, it's just right. like, it's like communicating, you're communicating with yourself, but it's weird that it feels, it's just so weird. <laughs> it's yeah, like, like, it feels other, like, like while you were de describing that just now, I started thinking like, like there's like the individual right and then um and it, it almost does feel like it's coming from somewhere else but if you think about like just like like our mind like the, the human mind is older than we are as an right. individual right it's three hundred thousand years old however long old human beings are right so like that part of us in our dna or whatever like of the species is older than any individual so it's almost like this thing the, the genome whatever is is expressing itself through you you know what i mean yeah it still is you and it still is a part of you but that piece of you that you're using that tool of, of your mind that you're using is older you know right it's, it's yeah. passed through like hundreds and thousands of generations yeah and it, it's, it's better at it than you are you know right it can kind of like work its way through you if you allow it you know yeah it's so weird and so like as an artist you, your job is to do what you got to do to let that thing work through you it's like right. our, it's like our job it's like it, we were, you know every artist i know um feels like you know they were chosen to do it or it's your you know it's something that you're born into you have this natural feeling for it it's like this is what i am this is what i do and so that because you have that built-in passion then you it forces you to learn all of these technical things which is almost like this training it's like it's like it's like shaman it's almost like it's like shamanism in a, in a it, yeah it's like in the same way that you're born into shamanism in, in a lot of cultures and then they train you if you've got this talent for it they train you so that you know how to work in that field or to, to, to serve that your purpose all the way as the same way as an artist, you have to learn all this technical stuff so that you're, so that the, the thing can get out properly and as succinctly as possible. Otherwise you're not doing, you're doing a disservice to the thing. If you're not, if you haven't done your homework to make sure that you can express it properly in the best way possible. So it's like, you have this duty to serve this other thing. So we get back to the serving idea too, in a way, you know, like, totally, yeah. you know, it's, it's <clears throat> when you're, when you're doing, your, when you're doing your own work, you're serving the painting, yeah. as, you know, as its own thing. It's crazy. It's, it's a trip, dude. It's an absolute trip. <laughs> it's wild. Cause it's like you almost, and that's why being an artist is hard. I think is like, it's almost like that, that mental service to that thing is almost like the X factor. Like, if you have the interest in uh, pursuing that, um, then then I think that's it's for you. But it's like because learning the physical techniques is one thing, you know, because right. you can get somebody who can make a photorealistic pick, like representation of something. Right. Right. And that's that's really impressive. And that's an accomplishment. And that's amazing. But then you can get this other skill set where you're serving that thing. Right. And and it can come from somewhere else it seems you know yeah like, it's like a totally it's like a different thing it's different yeah. that it's like you need the tools to be able to express the thing but you also have to be able to allow that thing 
to work through you. You have to get out of the way for that thing to happen. Yeah. You yeah. know, you have to like not impose your own will onto that thing. Yeah. You know, um, otherwise it's not going to be, it's not going to be the real thing. Yeah. It's going to be you. It's going to be your ego on the canvas instead of the yeah, thing, 100%, the, 100%. The, d- the deeper thing, you know? Yeah. That's such a trip, man. It's such a trip. And I still, I still feel that like battle all the time. Like, you know, even, even when I'm starting a new piece, it's a little nerve wracking, you know, even though I've done it however many hundreds of times, like mm-hmm. I'm still like, am I going to be able to pull the trick off this time? Right. You know? <laughs> and I go back and forth the whole time until all of a sudden it reaches a point where I'm like, Oh, there it is. Right. Yeah. It's been right under my nose, literally the whole time. Yeah. There it is. You know? I was just I was just talking to I think a student about that or I might have talked about it on the podcast but it was like I hit I uh that's the fun weird that's weird I never even thought about it but after the ego death show I didn't have that feeling anymore <clears throat> like everything e- ego death was 2012 I think or 2013 somewhere around there I think yeah and so from the first 12 years I guess I had that feeling of like I don't know if I'm going to do it this time I don't know if I could do it. Like it was like every painting was like, oh, I hope I could pull this off. And and for whatever reason, after the ego death show, I think I just got enough work under my belt where I was like, I felt confident that I could always pull it off. <clears throat> and so it's like something you, I think you you grow out of eventually when, yeah. when, you, when you have to get just a certain amount of stuff under your belt. I'm sure it's different for everybody, but um, yeah, I remember yeah, specifically like- that happening and it was like, whew. That uh, feels good <laughs> to, <laughs> to not have to worry about it every day. <laughs> yeah, right. Fuck yeah, it almost becomes like a an autopilot or like a what would you what do they call it? Like non autonomous or like breathing. You know, it's like right. you don't think about breathing. Right. Yeah. You just like do it as you're doing whatever you're doing. It's just yeah. Happening. Yeah. Heart beats itself. It's right. almost kind of like that. Like if you get if you get used to it enough, it just kind of ha- it's part of your process. It just like happens right you know. but it can be a difficult thing to learn for sure yeah that's just to get know. out of your own way yeah and again that's the the rule of life right there too it's the same oh. thing. It's yeah. the rule of life and the rule of art it's the same uh, i like don't want that to be the answer for some of the problems in my life <laughs> <laughs> nobody wants to admit that <laughs> like god damn it it's up to me i guess then <laughs> Like nobody's gonna clean this fucking studio either. That's on me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I got to take my dog to the vet. So I, I was I had a great time talking with you. Um, oh, likewise, man. Yeah. Likewise. Thank- You've been such a big influence on me, dude. I didn't say that yet, but um, yeah, like I wouldn't be where I am without your influence and and learning yeah. from you and stuff. It's just yeah. Thank you. Just oh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's great. I appreciate you making the time. Uh, you know, we've been talking. I, I, when I went to send you the Zoom link, I was like, man, I asked him a long time ago and I haven't gotten back to him yet. I saw like the, the message. So thanks for, for waiting around for me. Yeah, um, all, good. all good. Yeah. Uh, so where can people check your stuff out? What's the best places to go? Even I'll, I'll put it in the text, but for people. Yeah, you can go. Yeah, you can go to uh, Instagram at grave period daisy. That's my Instagram. Grave um, Daisy. Grave. Grave Daisy. Grave like period. Like, yeah, Grave period Daisy. Okay. Um, and then just Richard Ingersoll on Facebook. And then I need to get some like consistency across this shit. But the web, <laughs> my my website was going to be for like this book thing I was doing, and I, I haven't changed the name of it yet. But my website's CandyDeath.com, spelled like Megadeth, like just D E T H. Okay, CandyDeath.com. Death. Yeah, I got really obsessed with the the positive and negative thing in, in one word kind of thing. <laughs> I was like, yeah, but yeah. You can find me on those things. Cool. Well, um, as you know, you just have to say goodbye to the audience and then we'll oh, be goodbye, done. audience. Thank you for listening to us ramble. Yes. Thank you. And goodbye. And we'll talk to you next week.